Our third, thank you, Olivia. Our third uh, speaker is a Norwegian art designer, sociologist, educator, and writer who published what we believe to be the first popular science book about Nordic LARP back in 1998, co-founded the Knutepunkt conferences, and is well known for the world touring LARP, Just a Little Lovin'. And last year, the full LARP, LARP script for that work, 630 pages, was published as a book. She's currently employed as a doctoral researcher in, games, um, in game culture studies at Tampere University doing research about role play and sexual arousal. But today she will talk to us about something else, namely about LARP scripts. A specific run of a LARP is ephemeral. This means that it disappears uh, once it's completed. But complete LARPs can also exist in our minds, even when we haven't played them. For instance, because we've read a LARP script, if we have that LARP script literacy. Please welcome Hanne Grasmo. Hello, I want to use this one. Is it on? Yeah. yeah. Hello. This spring, I read 2,303 LARPs. It's actually not true because I browsed 2,303 LARPs. My mission was to find LARP scripts in English or Nordic language. My desire was to read LARPs. Not true either. My desire was to prove that a LARP can be read, that LARPs are more than LARPing. Last year I did something else to prove the importance of LARP scripts. Uh, Edland Groot Groot and I published this LARP script to make you be able to touch and feel the weight of LARP design. <laughs> My vision for this talk is to inspire you to read LARPs, make LARP scripts and publish them as books or in archives, more on the archives later. LARP are described as ephemeral. LARP doesn't exist until it's over, but at the moment it ends, it's the souls, it's koyon. LARP is only possible to research and analyze after they have been played, Dr. Stenros says. So LARP is LARPing? Thus, LARP might, may be read as books in hindsight to explain LARPs as memory of the LARP or in anthologies of articles discussing design, for instance, the Knutpunkt books. The focus, I think, of LARPs that happen during gameplay may eradicate the multitude of text documents that, um, text documents that are part of LARPs or maybe LARP itself, namely the LARP script often meant for the LARP designers and the game producers' eyes only, but also sometimes published for the players and other readers to access. They are immersing in the water. They are LARPing. This is what LARP is, right? Interaction, cool creation, musky smells of bodies and chilling feel of cold water. So how can I compare that to the dry shores of words? This is some of the categories I'm thinking about. Design abstracts, mostly websites these days. LARP scripts, called scenario, main document, book. LARP retrospects, like blueprints for designers, books about play stories, methodical texts, explain and discuss designer methods, and academic texts, discuss the phenomena and meaning of LARP. Because yes, I want to discuss the phenomena and meaning of LARP. That is why I went into this journey over darky, dark, <laughs> dangerous, deep and dark water called PhD. And I'm not studying any kind of LARPs. After all, <laughs> you are listening to the Nordic LARP talks. I'm understanding Nor Nordic LARP as art games in the sense that Astrid Enslins define. Enslins talk about these kind of games as literally ludic texts. Interactive games are in perfect balance between the literary, like book or film, and the ludic, playable like a game. I think LARP scripts can be understood as literal ludic texts. To experience the LARP by reading, you need the ability to imagine how it will be played, like reading Hedda Gabler or The Midsummer Night's Dream as a theater director. So we are at the shore, and we want to read the LARP script. The term LARP script 
was, I believe, first used by Harviainen in 2009 and widely spread by uh, LARPs from the factory project, for instance, by Trine Lise Lindahl. And in 2022, Josephine Vesper had discussed the term in a fresh 2022 article at nordiclarp.org. I could discuss about that, but yeah, I don't have time. Um, so I'm going to turn my manuscript here as well. Um, in LARP design, the Kipay book 2009, LARP scripts are defined loosely as all the written material needed to stage and play a LARP. But at the same time, these written materials are regarded only the starting point, the score for the for play, Stenos and Montla. But I do not agree with those loose definition of documents needed to run the LARP, but lean on Harvinen when defining LARP scripts, because he um, distinguished between LARPs that the designer will repeat themselves and in making a script that anyone can run. I narrow. I missed something there. I miss LARP books. Hmm. No, it doesn't come. Okay. Um, yeah, I narrow my treasure hunt to LARP scripts books, as book is de a definite form that cannot change and therefore is a cultural object. In these books, we can read repeatable LARPs from a designer's view. So this is like my preliminary definition of a LARP script. It has to be one whole text, rerunnable for others. You have to be able to experience the story and design, and I think you need some LARP literacy to read it. I went on the internet journey to find as many LARP scripts books as possible. Many of you have also suggested for me. And this was the treasures I found. Uh, as you can see, I had to broaden my definition of book because there were so few compared to the US where there is several hundred LARP script books in the traditional sense. So I included in book, LARP script, public, accessible as PDFs published in archives. The journey made me find the biggest treasure of all that I actually didn't know about, the Alexandria Archive for Roleplay. Lob scripts books in traditional sense counts what I have found. Please send me more. If you know about more, uh, I will be very happy. 20 anthologies, seven monographs, 20 LARP scripts books, uh, LARP scripts included as a part of a book, often to explain LARP or edu LARP. And then LARP published in archives. I met four key masters who guarded the realm of LARPs, and I interviewed them for my paper Reading LARPs for the Game Studies Spring Seminar at Tampere University. I would actually like to name them, because just like LARP scripts, the archivists need to be put in the spotlight. They are keepers of history, providers of knowledge, and often work in the shadows. The keeper of Norwegian LARP history, the founder and master of LARP.org for nearly 30 years, Tommy Finson. The traditional museum archivist for Finnish Museum of Games, Niklas Nylund. The LARP script warrior, forcing all designers at Stockholm Scenario Festival to publish their Finnish LARP script in English, free for all to download, Anna Westerling. And finally, the librarian, the fund founder of an archive meant to hold space for all roleplay and LARPs ever made. Keeper of Alexandra Deco, Peter, Pet, Peter, I cannot say it in Danish now, Peter Brodersen. The last one is guilty of the 2000 listings of LARP I read, uh, <laughs> while Stockholm Scenario Festival has archived around 150. The other two archives, zero and three LARP scripts. Okay, and as they have different views of why they are doing this. I could say a lot of this, but I have 10 minutes. Um, LARPs become books more likely if some factors is there. So the treasure did tell me something, that LARP can make their way into books, but that most of them don't. The other interesting finding is which factors. I have more than this, but this is the most, like, what you can take away the preliminary finding. They are small and short. They have played at con and festival happenings. 
they are often what I called, shoot me now, half LARPs, phone LARPs, web LARPs, letters or solo LARPs. They're often artsy and like make your own LARP while you're at the workshop thing. If the purpose is education, often make their way into books. If it's touched by US, it means that it's sometimes it has been to a US festival, known some uh, some people who publish an anthology or something, then it is more likely to become a book. Or it's known by Anna Westerling or Peter Brodersen. <laughs> so that is like, and actually I could put one more thing because it's an overrepresentation from a Chaos League, actually, I could put them too. Um, it's print by demand, it's uh, also a possible way to do it. Okay, so, 600 LARPs in the Nordic tradition let you set, sit safely on the shore or at your coach and imagine the whole LARP, understanding how it can be played and get to experience the art in your heart, just like any other encounter with art. A skill designer or player can know after re reading the LARP script if it will be this LARP or if it will be that LARP. And to do this reading, you need some skills, I believe, in art in general and LARP design in particular, to, to understand this from reading the LARP. And then I wonder, and I just put it out there, how LARP scripts may be written and published to reach the general art public and the funding bodies of art. Okay, thank you everyone for listening. And a special thanks to those of you have, who have published their lab scripts. This is my takeaway for you in five simple sentences. Read more LARPs. Publish more LARPs. Archive more LARPs. Run and, of course, rerun more LARPs. And first and foremost, play more LARPs. <laughs>